So first of all, to all of my Dharma friends, wherever you are located, I give you Tashidele heartfelt greetings, and I also hope that you are well, and I hope that you are happy. So all of us are in this situation that we have this precious human rebirth which is in our hands and having this precious human rebirth in our hands what we want to do is to be able to follow the advice so that we achieve meaning so that it goes well. And if we think about what is going to be explained today, this is something that is a really useful mind. It is something that is a practice that is going to be useful for us all the time. And if we practice it skillfully, this really becomes like a science of the mind. Mm -hmm. And so today specifically I will be explaining from a text by Lama Tsongkhapa known as the Songs of Experience and so there are many points that are described in this text but in particular I'm going to be explaining um, uh, some verses which are talking about uh, anger and its antidote patience. <laughs> So because these words are also very holy or, or very precious, I am going to recite the words for you first and then slowly, slowly I will go through an explanation. And so if one wants to be happy in this life, if one also wants to have a happy family life and uh, so forth, then actually these words are something that we kind of have to do. There's no other way to cultivate than this. Mm -hmm. So Geshe-la is uh, starting with the first shloka and also reciting the second. So he recited both of these in Tibetan. I'm just going to read them for you in English. Patience is the finest ornament of the powerful, the supreme of all hardships counteracting the afflictions, a garuda against the enemy, the snake of hatred, a thick armor against the weapon of harsh speech. Having understood this, cultivate the armor, of supreme patience in many ways. I, a yogi, practice like this. You who desire liberation should do likewise. So this first line, patience is the finest ornament of the powerful. This has a very deep meaning. It is a very important point. So we encounter many situations, both big and small in our human life, and one of the things we encounter are very difficult people. So, when we encounter these difficult people and they say something to us or they do something to us, if we remain silent and don't respond, if we hold our patience, that is something that is not at all easy to do. So that's why it says that it is the supreme of all hardships countering the afflictions. It is something that is difficult. And also, um, 
Toptan den Parua. And it is also said that in terms of the practitioner of patience, in terms of the practitioner of love and compassion, it's the ornament of the powerful because it is said if one does not possess some power, one won't be able to maintain this cultivation. So powerful here is describing a person with power, with capacity, a good person. So if someone were to come to us and say that you are not powerful, you are not a very capable person, you're not a particularly good person, then our automatic response would be not to be very pleased by that. But somebody who is powerful, somebody who is capable, this means that somebody, it describes someone who when they encounter a problem, they are able to maintain their bearings, they are able to be steady and calm. Mm-hmm. So if somebody says something or does something unpleasant to us and we want to respond with an angry answer to retaliate for that harm, that is actually said to be the same as drinking poison, to be the same as taking bad medicine. So, we don't maybe understand it, but actually, why is this the case? Because that person who we perceive as our enemy, they're actually somebody who is uh, close to us. They are actually uh, somebody whom we are connected to. The true enemy is the anger. And in particular, it is that anger that is within us, ourselves, that is the enemy. Because of some sort of internal mistake, because of a misunderstanding, we think that that outer person, the other person, is the enemy, and we think that the anger within us is the true friend. Mm-hmm. And if we, based on this understanding, we practice patience, we practice love, and we practice compassion, then this becomes like a medicine for the mind. There isn't need to say much more. So the line, a Garuda against the enemy, the snake of hatred. So the snake of hatred is anger itself. And uh, here they're using an analogy that anger is like a poisonous snake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, on the basis of this snake of anger or hatred, it won't be able to be just a normal small songbird that can confront it, right? It needs to be a powerful bird, so this mythical bird of the Garuda, which is able to defeat that snake of hatred. So anger is not something that's easy to overcome, it is quite pernicious, it is only through continuously engaging with love, compassion and patience and being able to empower those that one will be able to overcome anger. So Geshe said, sorry, he left out one line, so we're going back to the previous line, the supreme of all hardships, counteracting the afflictions. So because patience is not easy to practice, it is an austerity, it is something that is difficult, but it is the supreme thing that can counteract those afflicted minds. 
so there were many uh, scholars of past traditions who said that the supreme austerities were hardships of the body and by enduring hardships and difficulties of the body in this way one would be able to purify unwholesome karma or negativity. But the Buddha taught that this view is not really correct. So Buddha Shakyamuni explains that it is not uh, through these uh, uh, difficult type of physical austerities that one is able to purify. But in fact, what one needs to purify is not the body, but the mind, the internal things, the afflictions like anger, jealousy, pride, and so forth. By cultivating the antidotes to these minds, such as patience, love, and compassion, then one is able to completely uh, purify negativities and move closer and closer to supreme and lasting happiness. So, of course, a Dharma practitioner will be able to accept the truth of these words, but even if we aren't necessarily a Dharma practitioner or a Buddhist, if we are just somebody who is seeking to have a little bit more stable happiness in our life, we can definitely see the benefit of uh, decreasing these unwholesome minds and increasing the positive mental qualities. And in this way, we are able to become happier and happier. And so for all of us, as we uh, strive in our cultivation, if we really want to meditate correctly, if we want to meditate on something important, there could be no more important thing to meditate on than the drawbacks of anger and the benefits of patience. Mm. We can see very sorry, we can see very clearly the faults or the drawbacks of anger and because of this it is easy to meditate or contemplate this topic. Even if there's somebody who is normally agreeable, we can see that if anger takes hold in their mind, they very quickly can become somebody who is very unpleasant with their facial expressions, with the things that they say and the way that they behave. And somebody who is very angry uh, all of the time, who has a very strong anger within them, we can see that uh, what the result of that is, that other human beings wish to avoid them, even animals will seek to avoid such a person. And so, uh, uh, the, the fourth line in this shloka, a thick armor against the weapons of a harsh uh, speech, here when we speak about harsh speech in terms of the different types of non-virtues, it is one of the ones that is most impacting our life. So in terms of the non-virtues of um, uh, harsh, uh, uh, sorry, in terms of the non-virtues of speech, harsh speech is one of the most difficult. If we are able to uh, wear the thick armor of patience, then it can stop the dangers of this speech. Just like if a soldier goes into battle wearing metal armor, this will be able to stop any spears, projectiles, and so forth. Mm -hmm. 
So because this uh, practice of patience is one of the most beneficial armor that can protect us in our life, then this practice is one that actually we really must engage with. We cannot avoid this practice of patience. So the next uh, verse, the first two lines, having understood this, cultivate the armor of supreme patience in many ways, because this is not uh, such an easy practice to maintain, then we need to be able to engage in many ways with this practice of patience, thinking about the various many drawbacks of anger, contemplating developing conviction in the many benefits of patience and so forth. So the last two lines, I, a yogi, practiced in this way, you who desire liberation should do likewise. So, um, Lama Tsongkhapa, first on the basis of studying these teachings and then on the basis of practicing them, he was able to achieve a great and lasting happiness. So similarly, those who desire this lasting happiness, those who desire this state of liberation, should do the same. So for all of us it is very important to familiarize ourselves first with the words themselves and then with their meanings to think about what the meaning is of the various drawbacks of anger to think about the uh, various benefits of patience and then to kind of practice accordingly. So in following this advice, then um, please enjoying this human life, make this human life go well. Thank you very much.